episode is proudly sponsored by Champs Boxing Boxing Store and Limpy's Power Boxing in association with the British and Irish Boxing Authority. Now let's get behind the bell. Welcome to uh, this week's episode of Behind the Bell. Um, as by ever, we're joined by Matt. Hi, Matt. How you doing, mate? How you doing, mate? You all right? And uh, also we're joined by a very special guest. Um, he's professional boxer, Joe Hayden. Hi, Joe. Welcome to the show. Hiya, uh, yeah, mate. Thanks for having me on. Um, before we get to, in, um, to your boxing career and stuff like that, uh, can you just tell us how you got into boxing and why? Um... I've been I've I've been doing boxing since a little kid really just like just on and off though I've never fully took it serious I think I was about ten eleven when I first stepped in a boxing gym and um, and I did it for a little while and I had a skills bout when I was about twelve years old and then um, it was the ultimatum really you either go and play football or you go and do boxing and I chose football because that's I wanted to play what, like do it with my mates and and what have you so went and played football and I did that for for however many years up until I was about eighteen. But still, while playing football, I, I was flirting with boxing. Like in in off season, I'd go down to boxing to keep fit, and uh, I I always enjoyed boxing, but never wanted to commit to it because of football. And then uh, I got I just kept me playing football, and um, just never, could never really get back into the swing of it. And then that's when I thought I want to keep fit. I'm going to go down to boxing gym, and one thing led to another, and uh, I ended up falling in love with it. And, and I'm here now. Yeah. How did you find the route to pro? Well. Oh, I had one amateur fight at my old amateur club and then uh, we went into lockdown. And then I just kept fit throughout lockdown, really. And then Dave uh, dropped me, my little brother, a message, actually, about uh, coming down and doing a session. So he went down and, and I were at work, so I missed it. But the day after, I went down as well. And then from there, we carried on. And then um, I had, so I've had five amateur fights with Dave, I think it was. And we got to a point, really, where um, I was struggling to get amateur fights. For, for whatever reason, I was just getting pull-outs left, right and centre, uh, just people not taking fights. I went, I think I went a, a fair few months without having a fight, so Dave just said, he said, uh, we might as well turn over. So from there, yeah, we just we just decided. I think I had a Yorkshire title fight lined up, and then that fell through, and then I think that was last straw, really. Dave just said, we'll send your stuff off and get you turned over pro. Dave being a, a legend in the sport himself, uh, how, how is it working with him on a day-to-day basis? Yeah, it's wicked, mate. The The knowledge that Dave has of boxing is, is second to none and the experience that comes with it is obviously massive and um, he's developed into this, into a really, um, like an unbelievable coach, really. And I, I do honestly think that Dave will have a long, successful career as a as a boxing trainer and yeah, it's it's really good to be fair. We get on really well, and we've got a good relationship in inside and outside of boxing. Like we're really good mates outside of boxing, but then we can in snapper in snapper's fingers. We we put a serious heads on, and, and we get to work. So we don't know it's good in that aspect. It is. It, it's it's good you can be like that, isn't it, though, Joe? Like like my, with my old trainer, we was exactly the same. We done everything together. Like out of camp, we used to go out and have a, have a cheeky pint. Do you know what I mean? Like. Yeah. yeah, and it's it's good. It's, it makes it makes your bond stronger. No, yeah, definitely. Like, yeah, I spend I spend a lot of time with Dave outside of boxing as well. Like, we we are good mates uh, through boxing, but all yeah. So, but no, it is really good. Like, we we have we have a good crack, and then we just get serious heads on. We get to work when when needs be. But we it's it's good to to have that relationship. Yeah, like you say. Uh, so uh, that, that's quality. That's quality. And Dave is such a legend himself. So send our love to Dave. Yeah, we'll do definitely. Yeah, so like, so it's weird for me because I don't know. If, um, I've, as I've my famous catchphrase on me, I'm just a casual boxing fan. To to make that leap between like playing football where it's such a team sport, and I know boxing you have to have a good team around you, but when it comes to actual combat side of things, you're on your own in that ring. Mm. Why? Why did you take that leap? Like, I know you like dislocated your knee and stuff like that, but why? Why go into into that sort of environment when you come from such a team environment. Yeah. Um, I don't know. When I always played football, I always, I always used to say that, in a way, it's it's frustrating with the team sports because, like, let's say for football, you could you could outgame your life, but if the other 10 players on that pitch aren't playing very well, then you're going to lose that game whether you play brilliant or not. Whereas with boxing, it's all down to you. So if you have a good fight, you're more than likely going to win. If you have an off night, then you're more than like going to lose. It's all down to you. Once you get in that ring, everything else goes out at window, and it's down to you. So, and that's and I really enjoy that. I like, 
And I feel like that's what pushes me on with my training as well. Uh, I, I love training in general. I think that's what made me fall in love with it in the first place. It's just the training. But um, yeah, I think that's why I train so hard because I know that when I'm in there, there's no one else that's going to that's gonna jump in and help me or do this and that for me while I'm in there. It's, it's all down to me. So, um, so I work as hard as I possibly can and, and leave no excuse. When like they say it's, you know, it is, it's the loneliest sport in the world. Like, but no one else is to blame but yourself. Yeah. No, definitely. How do you find, like, uh, obviously, like, the nutrition side of things and keeping in shape all the time? Because, uh, obviously, being a young, a young man, uh, there's things that sort of lad culture tries to drive you towards and you've got to stay away from that. So how do you find that? Yeah, I mean, at my old amateur club, I never really took that side of it too serious. I was still going out having chuffy and McDonald's every week and... And going pub with lads and and giving on booze on a weekend and stuff like that. And then uh, I t I can't think back to when it when it sort of clicked. Really, I think it was it well when I I started training with David. I think the seriousness of it because I went from training three times a week at my old amateur club to to pretty much twice a day every day with Dave straight away. And I think the seriousness of it just sort of hit me. And I thought if I want to do this and do this properly, I need to. I need to act like a professional, really, because you can't go and eat what you want and drink what you want and then turn up and train to, your, to the best of your abilities. It just Your body won't allow you to do it. So uh, I think that was where it clicked, really. And and I started to uh, understand it a lot more. Obviously, i got John Clark, who helps me out with my nutrition. I start to understand my food a lot more. And um, and then I just really I started to enjoy it, really. So um, now the diet the diet side, I don't really see it as a diet no more. It's just my everyday eating. So... I don't really get many temptations or anything to go and eat and drink certain things because I, I enjoy the healthy eating and, and the staying in shape now. So it just comes se like second nature now, really. So uh, so what's next for Joe Hayden? Um, I think I'm, I'm possibly boxing in three weeks' time. That'll be uh, fight number eight, I think, in, in eight months it will be. So... Yeah, I think I'm. Uh, I've got a few more four rounders left, and then we'll start pushing on to six rounders, and then uh, in a year or so, then we can start looking at, um, at up in up in level really, and looking towards titles. I think, but for now, it's for now for me, it's just all about learning and uh, and building that experience. But obviously, uh, I've not had much experience in boxing. I'm still I'm still a, a novice, really, if you can say. So um, no, for me, it's just about getting rounds and learning for now. Mm. And uh, what's been a career highlight for you so far along your journey? Um, making my debut was were, were, um, were really good. And obviously selling, sold a lot of tickets for my debut and having everyone come out and uh, and being under under lights for the first time, having it streamed on YouTube, it was a bit unrealistic really because, say, I'd not been doing it that long and then I was there watching myself on telly the day after. It was, it was strange, but... Um, I think as well, sparring Jack Catchwell. Um, wow. Go, going and sparring Jack weekly, that's a, that's a massive highlight of my career because you would have never thought a year ago, even maybe even six months ago, that um, that I'd be sparring fighters the calibre that Jack is, like top world-class fighters. So, no, that's a, that's a massive highlight in my career, definitely. Wow, that's quality. Your um, stable, uh, with Mike Rhino, obviously with Dave Allen, um, got a lot of good fighters down there. Who else in the gym should we be looking out for? To be fair, all, all the lads are doing really well at the minute. There's, uh, there's Liam, who's, uh, who's doing well at amateurs, looking to turn pro this year, possibly. Uh, Oliver's really, really grafting at the minute. He's had, he's had a really, really hard week this week and he's, and he's got through it. He's done really well. And uh, there's Calvin, who uh, Calvin's going to be really good in years to come. I do believe he's going to be He's going to be a big lad. He's going to be a good fighter as well. Um, and there's young Jay. Young Jay, who's a, a freak, really. He's <laughs> like, he shouldn't, he shouldn't be that good. He's like a, he's like an old school, he's like an old fashioned boxer in a young kid's body. It's a, it's good. It's like, it's weird to see the things that he does. A kid his age shouldn't be doing. So he's going to be, in years to come, if he sticks with it and stays on it, he's going to be really good in future. And his brother, Ari, he's a good, strong young lad. To be fair, Dave's got a good stable that he's building down at, down on Patio Dreams. And, um, yeah, I think uh, I think if you're no good, Dave's, that sort, Dave's the sort of person to 
to to get boot to be honest. So I don't. <laughs> I think, yeah. So yeah, every everyone's uh, got a bright future, hopefully. And then, um, do you have any pre-fight rituals before you go out and fight? Um, not really. I've had a. I've got a chiropractor, a physio, come and crack me up and that before um before I go out to fight. I guess. I guess you can call that a ritual. But no, I've not, I've not really got any, uh, not really any routine to it. I don't put my boots on either foot or uh, <laughs> or out like that. Yeah, just just crack on with it, yeah. And what's your uh, walkout tune? What's your favourite walkout music? I've used the same one for the last few fights now. It's been uh, Elvis Presley, Trouble. Okay. I, uh, I used it at Dome and... Um, my mate, he said, big Elvis fan, he said, I'm not sure if it'll if it'll work. It's not really one of them sort of songs. So when it come to it and it played, every, everyone seemed to love it. And it's everything sounds different when it's on big big speakers. Like every, everything sounds good. But but now everyone seems to like it, so I just stuck with it, yeah. You could, I've walked out to Elvis Burning Love before. That's a tune. That, that is a tune. That, that, that was pretty epic. Yeah, that was good. But I might switch it up next time. I don't know. I'll get a bit bored. I don't know if I'm bored of it now. <laughs> Fancy something a bit different. Well, if you if you ever if you ever fight in London, Joe, let us know and we will definitely buy some tickets and uh Yeah. And and, and come and watch you, mate, hundred percent. Yeah, it'd be wicked. I'd love to fight in London to be fair. I've got uh, I got a lot of family uh, in London and Essex, so it'd be good to box down that way. Oh we're we we're, we're more than happy to support. And um yeah. Let's get let's, let's get some belts around you. Yeah, definitely. No, thank you. I really appreciate that. So, uh, so Joe, we 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 ask this question to every every guest we have on. So we're stuck on a desert island. Right, uh, you're allowed three pro boxers, dead or alive, to go with you. Who would they be? I'd have to take Dave. Will I? Cool I'll take I'll take <laughs> Dave. Um. Oh, so it's, it's a good question, and I'm not sure who else I'd take. Is it? Is there any boxers or good good cooks, good good chefs? I, mean, I need a good. <laughs> I need a good chef while we're out there. <laughs> who, who can cook? That's what, that's what I need. I need someone who can cook something out of nothing because I'm a. I, I hate to go hungry. Dave Tyson Fury, he'd be a good crack, wouldn't he? It, him, and Dave, him and Dave, him and David Pals as well. So there's no. No worrying about making friends all that. I'm in Dave with good pals. I think <laughs> so Dave Tyson and uh bloody hell. Who else would I take? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> a, a pro boxer who can cook. That's what I'd take. <laughs> I'd take a good chef. Uh, there, was, there, there was one and I can't remember his name that he did love to cook. Yeah. Oh, I can't I can't remember who it was. Not He's got the grill. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah. Well, if he can cook, then he's coming. <laughs> <laughs> and that's me free. <laughs> Dave Tyson and someone who can cook. <laughs> well, Joe, uh, thank you very much for your time uh, this week and uh, hopefully we'll see you soon. Um, if people want to support you, where can they find you? Uh, I'm only on Instagram. So on Instagram, it's uh, Joe Aiden underscore 99. And uh, we'll put the link in the description below so people can get to you. Quicker. Wicked. Okay, well, thank, thank you for you. your time this week. And it was nice no, to catch up with you. Thank you for having me on. Appreciate it. Well, that was uh, nice to meet Joe. We wish you luck and everyone at the Wino right, right, right team and uh, Dave Allen's management team. Uh, yeah, definitely. 100%. We wish, we, we wish Joe well. We wish them all well. Um, a safe, uh, a safe career. And um, yeah, like, I, I can't wait to see what uh, what Joe and, uh, and Dave bring in the future. Okay, and remember, guys, the uh, hoodies and T-shirt at Nimbus Power are selling out fast. So, um, right. if you want <laughs> very fast, so if you want your stuff, jump over to Nimbus Power's Instagram page, uh, message them, get your stuff in, uh, and also hit the subscribe button down below because it helps us out so much. Follow us on Instagram, go over and grab us on TikTok. Remember, hit a like, hit a share. Have a good week, everyone. Have a good week, Matt. Have a good week, mate. I'll see you later on. And take it easy. Thank you.